What's up everybody, Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have yet another album review for you. And this is one I've been definitely anticipating, but wanted to make sure that Jam and John was with me for this one because I don't think he'd heard this band before. Nope, never heard him. And I had a hunch he might dig him. <laughs> and I don't know, I think I'm probably right, but uh, well, we're gonna go into it and see. So we're gonna go over the latest offering from Hell Ripper. Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags. This comes out also on the 17th of February on Peaceful Records. This band formed in 2014 in Scotland. This is their, or rather his, third full length. This is a one-man blackened speed metal slash thrash metal act, James McBain. This dude is young and fucking full of fucking riffs. I was a huge fan of their last album, The Affair of the Poisons. I thought it was an absolute fucking banger. Pretty much have been hunting down the rest of the releases. I still need to get the first one, but I have some EPs. Either way, lots of killer stuff from this guy. And yeah, uh, just judging by the last album, I was already fucking stoked for this one. He hadn't heard it yet, but uh, well, where were you greeted to? I mean, just man, God, right off the rip, dude. No holes barred, this guy just comes out swinging. First of all, one dude. One dude. Extremely talented because I believe he's playing everything. Like, I really honestly believe he's playing drums on this record. It sounds like real drums. Uh, like, yeah, if he found a it, drum program, he found one that sounds very analog, yeah, yeah. very if spot he, on. If he was programming, he found the perfect mix. The knuckle A, knuckle AV. Knuck, knuckle, knuckle Eve? Knuckle Eve? Knuck, knuckle Eve. I don't, uh, I don't know how to say this word. It's an ancient Scottish creature that lives in bogs and feasts it on be. posers. Um, immediate thrashy goodness. Just straight out of the box. Man, these riffs are insane. Dude, this guy has found quite this like perfect balance of like just old school thrash riffs, like some blackened moments here and there to make it sound extra sinister and evil, because there's some really great melodies in this opening track too. Mm -hmm. Like kind of akin to like a band like Tribulation where it's spooky and haunting, like just a touch gothic, but it's these thrash riffs. He's going full bore like machine gun fucking riffing and instantly just kind of brings you back to like you know kill them all fucking bonded by blood yep but also like a lot of like german thrash like i would say like early creator and fucking early sodom for damn sure sure not that this song loses pace at any moment or not that it, the rest of the songs aren't thrashy because they all are uh the cursed carrying crown that song god i mean we're talking anthrax thrash energy i mean we're talking giving scotty in a run for his fucking money did the pick hand it, it's, it's just fucking flying on here but man like this whole song is just peaked energy like yep. it pretty much starts at a fucking 10 and just holds you there even on like the more melodic bridge mm -hmm. and that is definitely a thing that this band does or this guy it's the same thing hell ripper james band, the same person anyway <laughs> the awesome thing that this album does is these songs are a little bit longer than the last album like the overall the songs are a little bit longer and I was kind of wondering about that because a lot of his songs are just very short, abrupt, in your face, they're very explosive. And you still get all that, but what he likes to do is take these bridges for a walk. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of this giant thrash storm that is the Curse Carrying Crown, which is probably one of the most intense tracks in this entire album, and that is saying something yeah. because all these songs are very intense. It takes this bridge for a really cool melodic walk with great heavy metal harmonies, great fucking solos, and they're not like just short little fucking blips, you know, just like some quick scales, some quick runs. These are really well thought out, very melodic solos. Yep, very melodic solos, and the, the riff work even, very catchy and hooky, but not in the sense of like typical catchy hooky riffs, like the, the things that he does, the little intricacies that he throws in in each riff, to complement the melodies. It's like he complements the melody with a harmony, and it's always got these scaly kind of runs to him. Yep. Uh, I love those little seasonings. Yeah, yeah. And he does so well to transition, like songs like Goat Vomit Nightmare or Meester Steelworm. Those both have these really cool um, acoustic transitions. It gets soft for a minute, it gets kind of airy, kind of atmospheric, and that's what he uses to transition into even more crazy madness and it works really well like you get this nice little like breather it's not like a full breather where you get like more than three breaths like you get like okay oh shit we're going again but it's awesome how it leads in like you'll hear the acoustic melody and then all of a sudden you start hearing like the guitar harmonies kick on mm -hmm. and then bam riffs bam fucking drums we're going right back to it but it's not just 
purely thrash on here that's the central thing. Like, there's a lot of classic heavy metal. Like, there's definitely nods to, like, Angel Witch, Iron Maiden. Motorhead is fucking all over the Hissing Marshes. Like, you even have an isolated bass yeah. intro. It almost sounds like Iron Fist. Like, it's really close. Channeling Lemmy, like, he, he, he looked up to the heavens... And he said, Lemmy, I need your help. And Lemmy was like, okay. And then, like, <laughs> there it is. The energy is there, but it's Motorhead-ish, but it doesn't feel like it's just purely derivative because he adds his own little melodic flavors on there. And, like, all the riffs on here, I would say, are, like, kind of, like, just, like, universally fun metal mm -hmm. riffs. Like, they're metal riffs you could play for, like, almost anyone that's into metal in general. Like, whether or not they just, like, strictly thrash metal or you know, black metal, death metal, whatever. These are kind of these uniform riffs where like, yeah, that's just that's just good fucking metal. That's just yep. a good fucking yep. riff. Good example would be the title track. It actually kind of takes a break from the thrashy fucking rippers of, you know, the Knuckle Levy. We don't even know what that is. And <laughs> I the Deceiver. That one kind of actually has like a little bit of like classic Dio and classic Aussie to it. Mm -hmm. More mid-tempo. It's dark and sinister, but it's very melodic. Like I kind of think of like shit like Ultimate Sin by Ozzy a little bit, maybe minus the sins. Huh. But it also like kind of moves around to like heavier sections. There's a little bit more of like a black and atmosphere in some sections. And there's even like some very like even further back like Thin Lizzy style harmonies toward the end. And songs like Poison Wound, The Curse of the Witch, this has a a little bit like more of like a creepy vibe to it. It's got this real creepy intro melody. It just sounds like a little bit darker overall. Yeah. Uh, while it's still a real ass kicker of a song, this is a great example of how he bookends riffs. Because it happens all over this record. But like in this song in particular, it opens with this creepy kind of atmospheric melody. And then it gets into the ass kicking. And then it closes with that same creepy ass. Honestly, melody. yeah, that, that's kind of like... Uh, par for the course in terms of this entire album, he never abandons a riff. Mm -mm. Like, if he leads in, you know, with something absolutely killer, you're gonna hear it again. And honestly, you'll probably hear it again with, like, additional harmonies on top yep. of it, or a yep. fucking ripping solo, you know, or just some way to, like, intensify it. Because, man, like, he knows how to start and stop these songs, but, man, that middle part is just an awesome journey. Again, the bridges end up being kind of, like, one of my favorite sections because this is where the song kind of takes you know, all sorts of turns into different genres. Like, you can get a flat-out black metal section with blast beats mm -hmm. and shit. Or, again, you can get, like, some classic fucking heavy metal again. Hell, there's even a little bit of punk in the Hissing Marches, which, I mean, like, you know, punk and Motorhead do get along pretty fucking well, too. I, mean, I would say a lot of this is fun. Like, even when it's, like, spooky, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it definitely has, like, a spooky atmosphere in spots, but it's kind of like that, like, more like a 60s or 70s horror movie vibe, yeah. like, where it's just kind of, like, fun and campy. And that doesn't take away anything from this at all. Like, all of it is very well done. And I think it's a giant improvement from the last album as well. Like, there's definitely a lot more dynamics. Vocally, I think there's more dynamics on here. The last album, I kind of thought he was, like, screaming into a broken microphone. Like, it was very <laughs> crackly. Was like, I think that thing's busted. This one, the screams are much more clear. And there's also, like, you know, like kind of like a gang vocal mm -hmm. sort of roar that comes in occasionally. And then you got ones that sound like they're further back in the room, like a little bit more cavernous. And there's even some death roars. But I gotta say, like, the big thing that, you know, <laughs> showed me that this guy was getting so much better at songwriting as if he was bad already. He wasn't. He was fucking great. Not at all. But uh, the last track, Mr. Stewer Worm. I don't even know what that is. That sounds like some fucked up children's book character. This song whoops unholy amounts of ass. First of all, longest song on the record, eight minutes and 30 seconds. So you already kind of know by the, the pace of this record and how everything has led up to this moment, you already kind of know what you're going to get. But I didn't know what I was going to get. Me either. Holy crap, is this song awesome. You got like doomy melodies. Again, thrashy as all fuck. Tons of dynamic, but... I have to say something, and Nick and I both agreed on this, and uh, this sounds like old school Opeth. It does. Back when Opeth was Opeth. Yeah. We're talking My Arms Your Hearse, we're talking Baying of the Hounds. Um, yeah. God, wow. Yeah. I, that whole bridge. I mean, honestly, even like leading up to it, like how the song was constructed, again, this was like the most dynamic song mm -hmm. on the album. It has all sorts of like just cool transitions and the acoustic moments that build into like giant heavy metal harmonies. When you get down to this bridge, like it just has those 
classic sounding Opeth fucking riffs. And even the lead melodies go on top. I think the only thing that's missing is maybe some keyboards, but I don't think keyboards would really work on this. This is no. still a raw, gritty, fucking gnarly album that wants to fucking punish you. But man, does this last track show off Again, some of the best songwriting I think uh, James has come up with yet, and like everything, like the technical precision, yeah. the fucking moods on it, the atmosphere. I mean, it's straight up death metal at times. You blast beats and growls, and God, what a fucking awesome song, and what a killer way to end a fucking record. Dude, it even ends on this very somber, melancholy note. Like, honestly, it reminded me of like early Catatonia. Like, yeah. Actually, back when Ockerfeld was doing shit with them. <laughs> Coincidentally, I don't know, there's like kind of a weird tie there. And that is definitely something else I will say about this album versus their last one, or rather his last one. Again, that's kind of confusing territory. <laughs> um, it's way more melodic and way more dynamic, but it does not sacrifice any of the ferocity. In fact, I think it only makes the ferocious moments stand out even more because you have so much more going on. Like, this kind of goes beyond like, uh, like stuff like Toxic Holocaust. Toxic Holocaust is a fucking awesome one-man black and thrash metal band, but they play it more raw. They mm -hmm. play it more like meat potatoes. It's fucking awesome. This is meat potatoes, but you're getting like a lot of seasoning and maybe like an additional fucking appetizer with it. Yeah. Like an entire fucking Opeth song, or at least like, you know, five minutes of one. So that's like a third of an Opeth song. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for being a one-man band, this guy is just, like, like I said, grossly talented. The the drums, while they're in the pocket, still have a lot of flash and flair to them. I mean, the, the picking speed on here is insane. I had to really, 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 really search to find any complaints. And to be honest with you, I couldn't find anything wrong. I had to really search for it, and I didn't. I, didn't. I have... Like, the most minor of grievances, and it's mostly just about the flow of the album. I think Hissing Marshes and Poison Womb, The Curse of the Witch, are a little too similar. If you would put, like, Curse the Carrying Crown in between the two to break them up, uh, I think it would be, like, just, like, a little bit better in terms of the flow of the album. But honestly, every song fucking ripped. Every song was loaded with everything that I love about fucking thrashy, old-school mm -hmm. metal with a bit of a modern flair. I mean, it's just fucking good. Like, it's yeah. really fucking yep. good. Yep, I didn't know what to expect either, having never heard this band, this man, whatever you want to call it. Um, oh, Ripper. I don't know what I thought this was, but holy fucking shit, is this record awesome. And that, personally, is why I'm going to give it four and a half stars. Wow. Wow is what I have to say. I didn't see that coming. The unrelenting speed of this record is something else. The high energy, non-stop, even, again, even when it slows down, he does a real great job of keeping that build there. Like, you can still feel it, it being tense, even though it's slowed. The melodies are killer, the riffs are killer, the lead work is killer, the pacings of the songs are killer. I don't know how many times I can say killer, so I'm just gonna say four and a half, and holy shit am I impressed. Yeah, I am rather with you, four and a half. This is the best Hell Ripper album yet. I, I will go on record and say that. I, I've listened to the first one. I thought it was really good. I love the last one. This one, I don't know. It, it kind of goes beyond like, you know, the, you know, like classic fucking worship. Like this doesn't feel like rehash or retro at all. This mm -hmm. feels like it pulls from classic influences from a bunch of different camps and makes it its own. I think this is his finest songwriting yet. Like, oh my God, these songs are wildly dynamic but he didn't sacrifice any of the old energy. In fact, all of the old energy is here, and man, when it is fucking dimed, like, curse the carrying crown, holy fuck, dude. If that gets Ooh. played live, man, I, I hope that venue's insurance <laughs> is paid up. Like, that is a destructive song. Like, you might just hit your fucking buddy in the face, like, I'm sorry, it's, the riff did it. That's, yep. that's yep. I'm sorry, I'll buy a beer. Why did you use a chair? It was, uh, it was it there. Was there. <laughs> They're, they're still friends, don't worry, they're still friends. I'm sure. But yeah, no, I, I loved every fucking second of this. And I mean, I kind of went in knowing that I would like this because I've liked everything I've heard, but this is decidedly different. Like, this is a much bigger album than I think James has done. And man, like, I, again, I, I'm still a little taken back by the last track. Like, that is, like, some incredible fucking songwriting. Yeah, yeah. Like, was not expecting those twists and turns. Like, I was just, you know, Exchanging shocked glances with yeah, John here. Yeah, both of us, we were just like... 
do. Wow. What? And it makes me miss Opeth. I mean, the old stuff, yeah. I miss, I, I I mean, miss Opeth. I mean, you know, the new stuff's all right. It's all right. It, but, it yeah. is, but I miss Opeth. That's a different video. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, absolutely dig this. Four and a half stars all day. If you love shit, uh, early Sodom, early creator, uh, fucking like R and R in terms of black and thrash, fucking Iron Maiden, Motorhead, Angel Witch. If you like metal, yeah, I'm reasonably sure you will find shit you like in this. Go check this out. It is such a fucking whoop ass album. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there is a link down below to thrillsmetal.com. We are eventually going to restock on shirts. That is where you would get them, and that is also where you would help us out on Patreon, if you so choose. Last but not least, Denver Death Fest. We have two more five-band announcements coming up, and then we are fully stocked and ready to rock and roll. April 20th through the 22nd in Denver, Colorado at the King Room. Come out and see us. Come out and hang out. Tickets, I think, are, again, 60 bucks for all three days. Periodically, they've been running ticket specials. I know during Valentine's Day, you could get uh, all three days for, like, 30 bucks or some shit like that. I'm telling you, there's even a band in there I don't know about. All I heard was, you're going to like it. So, <laughs> I, I don't even know. But there's still 10 more bands to come. I'm super fucking stoked to announce them. I'm super fucking stoked that this is happening. It's turning... It's growing into something bigger than I ever thought it would be. Thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you to Zach at Swinging News Productions. Zach, I couldn't have done this without you, man. I really appreciate it. And our buddy Nate, who's not only running sound, but in the one of the bands, Occultus Verum. I can't wait to see all of that go down. I'm just stoked. Yeah. I'm really stoked. And, of course, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that shit. The awkward, thanky part. You yeah. back there. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I see you. We're loading up your thank bank. <laughs> or my thank bank. I don't know. Oh, no. Uh, I know. It's, it's, it's hella awkward at this part. I mean, you That's... guys know that by now. But, yeah, we love doing this. We love the response we get. I mean, it's just amazing doing this. Yep. I say the same shit. It's the same shit, but it's the same feeling every time that I am eternally grateful for Yeah, it's everything. a very, we're, we're very humbled and very grateful, thankful. It's it's all very heartfelt. I can't believe we're as far as we are. I really can't. Yeah. But it, we couldn't have done it without you guys, your continued support, your likes and comments and, and whatnot. We appreciate all of you. Yeah. And with that. We will catch you later. <laughs>